One of the most powerful features of WBPP is the ability to be able to group data, both on the calibration side of things as well as uh, when we get to the post-processing of our images. And as you know, astronomical images are constructed in a very particular way. They have data that is, of course, the values for every single pixel, as well as this additional information, what we're seeing here, is all of this information literally a text file that is attached to the images. And it's the header, the FITS header, that contains all of the information that we can use to analyze and add further context to the values that are recorded in the data. So it was already envisioned that, uh, you know, long ago, that these header files were created for astronomical data for computing purposes. So the grouping of data as it is implemented in WBPP is actually a computer programming type thing. That's how it's being utilized. So there's a very particular construct. It's called different things in different computer programs, uh, programming languages. A dictionary is the most common uh, name for what this is, what we're looking at here in a FITS header. But a dictionary or a hash table or things like that are basically a set of special words keywords, and that's what this first column is comprised of on the left of this FITS header. And then every keyword has an associated value. Now the value of course can change, and that change in value is what might differentiate one um, file from another. So I've just said a couple of very important points. Keywords are common to all files. So every file um, that I might open here that uh, was from this data set, is going to have an exposure time. Now it'll always say in each file the same keyword, E-X-P-T-I-M-E. In fact, some of these keywords are considered a standard of FITS headers, although it's hard to say that FITS headers have standard keywords. They really don't. People, a lot of people use the same words, but not always. In fact, you can make your own keywords. You can add or subtract some people, make up their own because they need to analyze the data in a way that is not available otherwise. So we have here things that are common to all of the files. We have an exposure time. It says something about the CCD temperature, the binning, all of that kind of stuff. So keywords are common to all the files that we might be working with. And then we have different values for them. We have, for example, here's an object keyword, and it currently has a value of M51. Now let's just take an example where we might image many objects in a single evening. And in doing so, we're going to have calibration data where we have darks and flats and biases and all that kind of stuff. But we've taken a picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy, and then we also took a picture of M3, and then we took a picture of something else in the course of the night. So now we have maybe three or four objects. They're all going to be calibrated in exactly the same way because it doesn't matter which object we point at, probably just in this very general sense. Um, they're going to use the same biases and darks and flats and, and everything to calibrate that information. But when it comes time to the post-processing of this data, we certainly wouldn't want to try to align the M51 images with the M3 globular cluster images, that wouldn't make sense. So what makes sense to be able to do, and I'm just giving you an example here, is to be able to group the data by this value here, by the object value. And we only want that grouping to occur when we get to the post-processing, the registration, normalization, rejection, and uh, image integration part of processing. For the calibration side, it's fine. We don't need to distinguish between the images, but we do when it comes time for the post-processing. So, in WBPP, we get to do exactly this. You can look in a FITS header file, like, I've, um, like I'm showing here, and if you look inside here, you can see any of these keywords you can take advantage of if they have values that you want to discriminate in some way, and I said one way, but there are lots of different ways you can discriminate between files that might be very useful to you. And so the example I gave is one perhaps example where if you had many objects and you just want to run them all through WBPP at the same time, you can. 
And I think that that's really kind of cool to be able to do. I will be demonstrating how that's done. But let me just take another example here. And this is the one where you might need to differentiate different, um, different data sets based on when they were taken because they might have different darks and flats and biases. You might need to group those data in a different way. So one of the things that you could look at here is you can see the date or the time that the images were acquired or taken. So down here, you'll see that this value for this string, uh, for this keyword here, date dash obs. So that's the keyword and this is the value, but you can see the complexity of the value itself. That value is not something that's going to be easily matched. You know, if we had just an object like M51 and then we had another object, we're literally only going to have one, two, three, you can count on your fingers, different, three different values. But here we're going to get basically every single image has its own unique value because these numbers are going to change uh, for each image. So we couldn't use the date obs as an easy way unless you somehow uh, consider only part of the, the uh, string here. Uh, it's not an easy way to group data. So a far, far easier way to do it is we make our own keyword. We just specify a night, for example. And you can, you can call them anything you want. You can make your own keywords anything you'd like. But let's say we were to call it, instead of a date obs thing, we're just going to make a new keyword in here that's just, uh, it could be anything, could be night, or it could be session, or it could be uh, Kermit. It doesn't matter what it is. And then the value could be as simple as a number, like one or two or three, or you could have an object, like a keyword that specifies an object, and then you could actually make the value night one or night two or night three or something. And that would be a way to distinguish, to discriminate between different evenings for calibration purposes. And I'll be demonstrating that as well. So with that in mind, what I want to explain here is that you can take advantage of the native keywords that are in your FITS header if you'd like, but you can also, just for ease of doing it, or just because there may not be a, a keyword that does the logic that you want to do, I'm going to now explain how you do custom grouping in WPPP by making up your own keywords. So now we're going to look at making custom keywords in WBPP, but let me just reinforce that WBPP is already doing this. It's already grouping data based on keywords and values. This is, of course, how it does its matching of calibration data with your light frames and many other kinds of bits of logic exactly like this. So just consider, for example, that we have in the in the FITS header, we have a keyword that's called filter. And of course, it's a type, right? And then we'll have many different values for, for it, which might be a blue filter, red filter, green filter, and so on. Uh, if you're using a one-shot color camera, you don't have a filter. You might have a no filter, in fact. So, but where do these labels come from? Usually they come from you, or at least they are programmed in. They are populated in the acquisition software that you're using. Uh, that your camera uses to generate the images. It's when the images are created and saved that this information is written to the FITS header. So in many acquisition softwares, if you're using a color camera, it's going to write for the filter keyword, it'll write a value of no filter. But remember, when I write these things here, it's not the meaning of them that matters. These are just strings. They are literally just the alphanumeric characters that we're matching on. So I've had this issue before where I might have a value of R and I, and you know, um, I'm expecting when I use the keyword filter, for example, to see my images grouped by red data, for example. But if the value I was expecting was R, it doesn't work because WBPP is going to not see this even though in my brain, I, I see that as red, right? But it's not a match. The R here doesn't match R-E-D. Likewise, case matters as well. Lowercase R-E capital D does not match R-E-D here either. So it is. it needs to be, you know, like in computer programming, it needs to be exact to the letter in every way possible, um, a match in order to have a match 
with regards to a particular value when you're trying to uh, group the data. So it is uh, perfectly legal to have hyphens in data and uh, capital, lowercase, and all that kind of stuff. I would discourage, I'm not even sure if it's legal or not, but I would certainly discourage having little dots in uh, your values. Uh, hyphens, by the way, is a very common one. You'll see that already in FITS headers, like with dates and temperatures and things like that. So it makes sense that hyphens should be. Now, keywords are a little different because we're not matching on keywords. Keywords are what we create that are common with all of the files. So it's not a matching thing. It is okay then to have hyphens in keywords. That's all right. But keywords then, um, the case doesn't matter at all. You can uh, just think of them all as being capitalized letters since the ca they're case insensitive. So it doesn't matter what if it's capital or not. It's just a keyword that can take on different values. So take, for example, you know, just so you can have this logic in your head, what would be the values for image type? So image type is a keyword, sometimes it's just IMG, TYP, uh, that you'll find in a FITS header. What are the types that you could list, right, four at least, that you could list here in this? I'll pause for a moment. So hopefully you came up with the idea of a bias frame, that's an image type, a dark frame, a flat field image, a light frame. And in fact, you now know, based on a previous section, that WBPP makes its own image type it adds a master, it adds the letters M-A-S-T-E-R to each of these things. And in that way, when uh, WBPP reads the FITS header and it looks under image type, it will distinguish between regular bias frames and master bias frames, which it'll load differently into WBPP. So I hope you can see that this grouping mentality, this grouping logic is already in play and we're extending it by making our own keywords with our own values. So let's consider um, an example. So I have two examples here. I made a keyword uh, veil nebula because it's the object I was working on. This is going to be common to all images that are the veil nebula. But maybe I want to distinguish between all those veil nebulas because I took them across many nights. And some of those nights, if not all of them, maybe I have to use different calibration data. Maybe the flats are changing or something like that. Um, to calibrate all of that light frame data. So the keyword is always going to be Veil Nebula, and I made it up. And then we have separate from the keyword um, a value. It's separated by an underscore. And the value could be night one, night two, night three, night seven, whatever it is. Um, that would be the value that I would be differentiating all of these Veil Nebula on. Or uh, let's say instead that's one kind of logic would be the nights. Another kind of logic could be that I was doing a mosaic of the Veil Nebula. So maybe I have an east frame and a north frame and a west frame and, you know, things like that. I could distinguish between different frames for a mosaic for processing in WPPP. So you have the keyword, you have the value, and the underscore then is acting as a what's called a stop character. The way WBPP works is that it actually just reads the entire path statement, including the file name, and it's looking for, um, it's looking for whatever you told it was a keyword, and then it'll stop reading when it gets to one of these little values here, because it needs to know, okay, well, you know, where do we start and stop for one of these values? So you put an underscore, and then you have a value, and then you might put another underscore, by the way, if it's in the middle here. So you, the best practice is you just put underscores to separate your keyword and your values. So here are two examples. Notice how you can just put it you know, right in the middle of a file is fine. Now I'm showing them as files here, but it can be anywhere in the path. So for example, you can just make a folder be a, uh, you know, to have this logic of a keyword and a value. So my folder name could be veil neb underscore east. That would be a folder name. And everything that's under that folder is going to have this um, designation of veil nebula underscore east. Even though in the files themselves, the file names don't have that. But by having the folder name have it, everything underneath, because it's in the path, um, will get that same uh, label. Now, keywords of course, you can take it, you can take from a header or 
as I say, custom, you put it in the path or file name. Mixing them is fine, but you have to understand that the file name path keywords, they take precedence. They are the primary way because they're the things that you're now, uh, logic that you're putting on top of what is already existing. So you are overriding anything that is in the FITS header if there is a collision, if it matches like, a, I don't know, if you wanted to change the filter name because the filter was not correct, then when you put filter, even though that is already in the FITS header, if you were to use the filter keyword and then put another value, that will override anything that was already there um, in the FITS header. And uh, you, of course, look in your FITS header. If something's already there, then you don't need to make a custom thing. Uh, but some examples of custom grouping, as I've already mentioned, are multi-night sessions, mosaic frames, uh, quick inspection of image attributes, all kinds of powerful things that you can do as far as uh, custom grouping is concerned.